Okay, we are going to continue with the June 2019 exam. We are now moving on to part B1. These are the slightly more difficult multiple choice questions. You might need a calculator for these ones, so definitely have it handy. There may be more reference table questions, but it's going to be a little bit more involved. Okay, the bright line spectra of four elements, G, J, L, and M, and the mixture of at least two of these elements is given below. Okay, so a bright line spectra is like a fingerprint for an element. Uh, this is energy that's released when an electron falls from excited state back down to ground state. Okay, it releases this energy as light. Okay, let's go to our question. Which elements are present in the mixture? Okay, so in order to be present in the mixture, every line must be present. So let's see if we can eliminate any. Okay, uh, see we have right here, double line right here. Do we have a double line in the mixture in the same location? No, so J is out, okay? So now we have two options left. I'm gonna look right here, look at this, see this line? Is that line here? No, so M is out. So it better be G and L. So that's a line, check, line, check, line, check, line, check. Let's check L. Double line, double line. So it is G and L. Which electron configuration represents an atom of chlorine in an excited state? So what I should do first is go to the periodic table and let's get the electron configuration for chlorine in the ground state. So that's the one on the periodic table. So 2, 8, 7. That's chlorine's ground state state. How many electrons? 2 plus 8 is 10 plus 7, so it's 17 electrons. Okay, So this right here I know is wrong because uh, that's exactly what the ground state is. I'm looking for excited state. Now what I need to remember is it must have 17 electrons, so let's add these up. 8 plus 2 is 10 plus 7 plus 2, that's 19 electrons, so that's wrong. 2, 8, 8. 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 8 is 18 electrons, so that's wrong. So 2, 7, 8, 8 plus 7 is 15, plus 2 is 17 electrons, but it doesn't look like this because one of the electrons has, boop, popped up to a higher energy level. There we go. A student measures the mass and volume of a sample of aluminum at room temperature and calculates the density of aluminum to be 2.85 grams per cubic centimeter. Based on table S, what is the percent error for the student's calculated density? So remember I said these are a little bit more involved. So I need to look up the percent error formula. So that's right here. Measured minus accepted divided by accepted times 100. Okay. So percent error equals measured minus accepted divided by accepted times 100. Let's just make sure I wrote it right. I kind of abbreviated. Measured minus accepted divided by accepted times 100. So it says the student measures and calculates. So this one is going to be measured. So that's percent error equals 2.85 minus. So now I need the accepted. So where am I going to find that? Well I know it's aluminum. That's an element. So I'm going to go to the reference table and I'm going to look up aluminum, and its density is 2.70. So that is the accepted, 2.70 divided by 2.70 times 100. Okay, let's put this in the calculator. So parentheses, 2.85 minus 2.70, and parentheses divided by 2.70 times 100 equals 5.5555. There we go. This one, 5.6. That's what it rounds to. Okay. All right, let's continue on. See what I mean? How these ones get a little bit more involved. Uh, magnesium and calcium have similar chemical properties because their atoms in the ground state have. So if we just look real quick. Magnesium and calcium, they're in the same group. 
that have similar chemical properties because they have the same number of valence electrons. Valence electrons determine chemical properties. So, is it, it has nothing to do with protons. Is it two electrons in the first shell or two electrons in the outermost shell? This one, valence, outermost electrons is what determines properties. As the elements in period two of the periodic table are considered in order from left to right, which property generally decreases? Okay, so period two here. So we're going to look at Li, Be, and B. Okay, those are just the first three. We can see a trend. So what happens to atomic radius? Goes down. Let's check the others. Electronegativity goes up. Ionization energy goes up. Nuclear charge, that means the number of protons in the nucleus. The number of protons in the nucleus is the atomic number. So it would be 3, 11, and 19. So that's also increasing. So this is the only one that's decreasing. All right, given this balanced equation, how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced when five moles of butane re react? So I need the balanced equation. So if I start with five moles of butane, right, I want to find out how many moles of carbon dioxide. Okay, I need the ratio. So how many moles of butane? Two. I look at the coefficient. How many moles of carbon dioxide? Eight. And so five times eight is 40, divided by two is 20. 20 moles. Or you could have just done simple math. 2 times 8, that's 4 times as much. So whenever, however much butane you start with, you make 4 times as much carbon dioxide. So if you start with 5, you make 4 times as much. What is the percent composition by mass of nitrogen in this compound? It gives me the gram formula mass. So percent composition is mass of part over mass of whole times 100. So it's part over whole times 100. The whole is what they gave me, 32. The part I need to find. How do I find it? Well, how many nitrogens are here? Two. And what is the mass for one nitrogen? 14. What's 14 times 2? So 14 times 2. Why 2? Because there's 2 here. Alright, so let's do that. 14 times 2 is 28 divided by 32 times 100. Should be a big number, right? It's most of it, 88%. Which ion in the ground state has the same electron configuration as an atom of neon in the ground state? Well, let's look at the periodic table for a moment. How many electrons does neon have in the ground state? Neon has 10 electrons. So Li plus. Li started with 3, it loses 1, it has 2. Oxygen started with 8, it gains 2, it has 10. Calcium starts with 20, loses 2, has 18. Chlorine has 17, gains 1, has 18. Which one is the same as neon? In terms of the number of electrons, right? Uh, molar masses and boiling points at standard pressure for four compounds are given in the table below. Which compound has the strongest intermolecular forces? Well, if it has the strongest intermolecular forces, it has the highest boiling point. So it is this one. Do you know why that is? That's because of um, hydrogen bonding, which is hydrogen with nitrogen, hydrogen with oxygen, and hydrogen with fluorine. Okay. Which particle diagram represents xenon at STP? Xenon is right here in group 18. It is a noble gas, so it is a gas. 
This is not a gas. This is not a gas. These two are gases. Which one is xenon? Xenon is a noble gas. This represents a diatomic gas, which would be Brinkelhoff. Bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. But that's not xenon, so it's going to be one. Uh, which is the amount of heat absorbed when the temperature of 75 grams of water increases from 20 to 35? So I need a heat formula. So I have a temperature change. So when I go to my heat formulas, I need the temperature change one. So Q equals MC delta T. Q equals mass 75 C. What is C? C is specific heat capacity. Since it's water, the specific heat capacity is right here. So 4.18. Delta T is temperature. I have to subtract them, so that gives me 15. Now I'm going to do this math. All right, 75 times 4.18 times 15 equals, what do I get right there? Four seven zero two point five, which rounds to this, right? Okay. Which sample of HCl reacts at the fastest rate with a one gram sample of iron filings? Well, faster rate at a higher temperature. So let's get rid of the low temperature ones. Well, the milliliters is the same, so all that's left is the molarity. This capital M means molarity. Molarity is concentration. If you increase the concentration, you increase the rate. So the higher concentration has the faster rate. Which statement describes the concentration of the two gases in this system? Well, see this double arrow also tells me it's at equilibrium. What, what should you remember? When we're talking about concentration, the word you should think of is constant. And when you're talking about the word equal, you should be talking about rate. So what describes the concentration? Not less than, not greater than, not equal, constant. If it's equal, that's rate. Okay. Given the equation representing a system at equilibrium, here we go, which change will cause the equilibrium to shift to the right? So this way is the right. I had to think about it for a second. So how can I make it go this way? Well, before I even look at my choices, I could increase the amount of this. I could increase energy, so that means raise the temperature. Or I could decrease something on this side. And that will make it shift this way. Adding a catalyst does nothing. Adding a catalyst speeds up the forward, but also speeds up the reverse reaction, so it has no effect on the equilibrium. So that's a definite wrong. So which one matches with these arrows I put? Increasing the temperature. Now, for increasing, let's talk about pressure for a second. If we have, this is low pressure, and this would be high pressure. See little space? When we increase the pressure, it favors less molecules. And on this side, I have one gas molecule. And on this side, I have two gas molecules. So the only way to go this way would to actually be lower the pressure. All right, given this formula, what is a chemical name? So first of all, let's count one, two, three, four, five, pent. Well, they all say pent. So let's go to table R. What in this structural formula is not a carbon or hydrogen? Just this at the end. So let's find that in table R. Here it is. That's an amine. So look at the name. It ends with an amine. This one. So right? This one, an amine. This would be an amide, but the one we found was an amine. Given this formula, this compound is classified as, well, all you can see right here, it's all carbons and hydrogens. I just have a triple bond. So what does that tell me? Reference table question. Triple bond with carbons. We have an alkyne. 
which equation represents fermentation. Fermentation makes an alcohol and CO2. So it has to be on the product side. That's here. CO2. OH means an alcohol. So there we go. Alright, so this is an alcohol and carbon dioxide for fermentation. Given this reaction, the oxidation number of copper changes from, well, first of all, I have two that have zeros, so let's determine if it's zero at all. If it's zero at all, it's an element by itself, and that's exactly what it is right here. So these two are automatically wrong. So even if you weren't sure, you should be down to a 50-50. So how do I determine if this is copper 1 or copper 2? I look. The charge of chlorine is negative 1, but I have two of them. So that means the charge of chlorine is negative 2. In order to balance that, the charge of copper would have to be plus 2. So it changed from plus 2 to 0. Almost on two last questions. Given the equation representing a reversible reaction, According to one acid base theory, the two H plus donors. So they're giving away H pluses. So let's follow the H. The H went from here to here. So this is a donor. Okay. And what donates on the other side? So if I look at the reverse reaction, it would be going this way. So the H3O plus. Okay. Last question. Which nuclear equation represents a spontaneous decay? This is a super easy question. I'm surprised it's in this part, but hey, I'll take it. Spontaneous means it happens on its own. When it happens on the, its own, there is one reactant. Look here, one reactant, two reactants, two reactants, two reactants, not spontaneous. Spontaneous decay, one reactant falls apart. Unstable nucleus, shake, 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 blah, falls apart. Okay, so that is the end of part B1. So we finished all the multiple choice, and those were the hard multiple choice. All right.